If I would have time, I would love to tell you how I feel about each of you individually because each of you have poured into my life, even if you didn't realize it. I was watching you, not watching you to catch you trip up, but watching, watching your faithfulness and watching how you stood strong and how you hug one another, how you pray for each other. I think that, um, I know I'm prejudiced, but I think you're a great bunch. Yes. <laughs> and so um, I'm very honored tonight. Every year for the past several years, God has given me a, a word f to focus on. And it's wonderful because, oh, after he'll give me the word, it might be a couple of weeks later, and I will hear some preacher saying the same kind of word, and I'm like, that's great, we're on the same page. And this last year, it was a, the year of harvest, but I want you to know that that year of harvest, it's not over. In fact, uh, it's really gearing up. And he has a new word for us tonight, but before I tell you about that new word, I want you to, to look for how he's bringing the harvest in, and that's going to be of the seeds that they've sown. Now it's time for them to reap, and so you will see people getting blessings when, when they didn't know which way to turn. You will see healings. That's reaping their reward for all the times that they prayed and cried out to God, but you will also see, even on the media, you will see exposures and revelations of things that were going on behind the scenes, and their house of cards is going to start to crumble. So when you see that, and when you see the chaos and the confusion, I don't want it to dishearten you. I want you to realize that the God's hand is at work, and he's bringing in a great harvest very seldom do I share dreams that I have, and I'm not going to share all of the details. I don't want to take up too much time, but I want to give you just a, a brief summary of a dream that I received just, oh, probably a few weeks ago. And it had to do with the harvest. And, and when I'm dreaming, everything that you see in the dream, if it's a God-given dream, there's a, there's a reason for it. And not always will I know automatically when I wake up, but if I will ask God about it and if I will ponder it, 99.9% .9 of the time, he always gives it to me within just a few days. And this dream was I found myself out in the middle of a field, and it was nighttime, and I was on the back of a, a trailer that you would hook up to a truck. It was like a wooden trailer. And as I looked out, I saw a fence, a wooden fence, the kind that the, the uh, slats are wide enough that you could crawl through. It just had the two little bars of wood across it. And over to my left, I saw three beings of light. And those three beings of light, I knew that they were angels, and they shone so bright. But the thing that I thought was strange is they had overalls on. And when I saw them, they looked at me, I noticed their overalls, and what they did then is they just crawled over the, the fence. Well, as soon as I looked at them, then I looked out in front of me, and I saw a multitude of people just standing and waiting. I couldn't count how many it was. I saw rows and rows and rows of people. And what was wonderful is these people, they, uh, they weren't broken. They weren't sad. They didn't have overalls on. And they were looking at me, and I thought, oh, they're all looking at me, and they're wanting me to say something, and I didn't know what to say, and so I just did the, the victory sign. I did it like this, like we fought and we won. And all of the hands came up just like that. And the minute that their hands came up like that, they started coming by the multitudes over the fences. And what that was is that was a great harvest. I was shown that the angels have gone out into the fields and they've gone out to get the people that you prayed for and the lost souls and they've gathered them. <laughs> and so I want you to know that the harvest isn't over. The harvest is just now ramping up. But I want to tell you about what the word is for this year that he gave. And the focus word for this year is a reset. The word the world talks about a great reset that's going to be coming, but God also talks about a great reset. And if any of you have any kind of computers at home or um, a satellite system, every once in a while if it's messing up, they'll tell you to 
shut it down to restart it to do a reset on it. And it will bring it back to the settings will be correct most of the time. Well, it's just like in life, when you have a reset, sometimes you have to shut down to fix what wasn't working, to return it to the correct way of life or how it was intended to work to begin with. Sometimes you have to start over. Sometimes you have to make a fresh start and begin again. So a divine reset is returning to our biblical roots, our foundation, the truth. It's a start over, if you will, a reevaluation of your life. It's to bring back balance and harmony, to do the things differently and better. And God said that it's time to do a reset. And if you looked at the world and if you looked at what's been going on, you know that we need to get back to our foundations. We need to get back to what the Bible says is the correct way of life. And it's just gone haywire. But I'm so excited because God said that this is the year of, of a reset. He's going to bring back what's gone off the wrong side. The Bible helps us to reset our lives with our thoughts and our attitudes, and it helps us to live with a vision, maybe even a newness in Christ. My, one of my nieces, when her son would wake up and was just having a rough day, rather than her scolding him, she would say, we need to do a reset. So I want you to, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go get your pajamas back on. Go brush your teeth. I'm going to read you a story. And I'm going to tuck you back in bed. And then when you feel like you can get up out of bed with a better attitude, then you get up and you say good morning. And she said sometimes that would be 3 o'clock in the afternoon and we were doing this when he was little. But she knew that he just had to have a reset. And that gave him time there in the bed then to rethink. And sometimes he would get right back up and other times he'd be like, Mom, I'm still having some troubles in here. I'm going to hang out here for a little while longer. But it was a way for him to reset our life because sometimes you get going throughout your day and you don't realize how many things are just falling around, down around your feet because your attitude just really stinks. Every once in a while, it's really nice for you to tuck away and do a reset. Well, God says, I want to do a reset in the world. I want to do a reset in your hearts. The Bible if you read the Bible, there's so many reset moments. So if you're finding yourself where you need a reset, one of the places to turn is the Bible. For, ex for example, if you feel like there's a giant that's too big to conquer in your life, if every time you turn around it's right there and you just can't seem to get over it, you can't seem to get away from it because it's so large in your life, think about David. And how David slew the giant. He didn't do it with his power and with his might. He did it with the spirit of God. So see, that lets you help. That helps you to reset. If you'll think about the children when they were faced the Red Sea and it seemed like there was no way possible out for them. There was an impossibility in front of them and there was enemies coming behind them. But God parted the Red Sea. He says, I'm able to make a way where there isn't a way. So when you feel like life is crumbling around you, get a reset moment. Go to the Bible. Think about the Bible stories that you heard about. One little one, I'm going to brag on her. It was very sweet out in the foyer before church started. She said, I heard that Jesus left the 99 sheep and he came after me. And I said, yes, he did. See, that's a reset moment. She said, and she, and she had a little journal, and she says, I'm going to write that down in my, in my notebook. So see, when you feel like you're all alone, if you can remember that he'll leave the 99 to come and find you, that will reset your day. That will reset your attitude. If you'll think about when you're feeling so hopeless and there doesn't seem to be hope anywhere, think about the cross and how the cross brought you new life and new hope. When you're not feeling loved and you're feeling less than good enough and you don't feel worthy, think about the baby born in the manger that came just to bridge the gap between you and God. That's how much you were loved. 
See, God in a moment can reset your life. In a moment, he can take you from guilt to forgiveness. In a moment, he can take you from anger to peace. And in a moment, he can take you from feeling so lost to feeling like you belong. See, there's a spiritual reset that takes place in our lives when we think about that kind of stuff. And when you do a spiritual reset, it's going to take you to a higher and a newer level in him. Our world is a mess, yes, and it needs a reset. But it all starts in the church. That outside's not going to get better till the churches inside get better. I can say this because we're Christians, but the world's in the place that it is because we've gotten lazy. We've gotten complacent in our prayer life. And before we knew it, we found ourselves in this mess, and some have even said, how did we even get here? And it's like because we were sleepy. We weren't paying attention. We didn't come at it with prayer on our knees of asking God's will to be done here on earth. So if you want the world to change, if you're upset with the way that it is, the way that it's going, if you're concerned about your children and your grandchildren, then spend more time in prayer because that's how you're going to change everything. God says, I'm going to do a reset. So when you see on the news, if you see things in government crumbling, don't also be so taken back when you see some churches starting to crumble, some church leaders starting to get exposed because God has to start cleaning house in the churches first so that he can get the old out and the new in the way that it's supposed to be. God said, I'm going to do a reset. So you hang on to my words and don't be shaken by what you see. Just know that I've got my hand in this. See, when the church gets on fire and they reset their priorities and it lines up with the word of God, then that's when we're going to see a change in our communities, in our cities, and in our world. One of the things that God wanted me to do was to have everybody take a slip of paper that had a street name on it with the city. Because as he said, I want you to start taking the city back. And the way that you do that is you pray for the people that live on that street. Well, I'm kind of sad to say that this basket, it's still pretty full. There's a lot of slips of paper in there. So if you feel led that you really want to make a change, then maybe it's time to look at your priorities of your, of your time and where do you take your time. And I would really love it if that basket would be empty tonight by the time that I left church. I would like it if somebody would take those, but only take it if you'll truly pray over it because that's how we're going to start a revival in these cities is why with our prayer. And you don't have to pray against things so much as pray for things. Rather than praying against discouragement, let's pray for peace to flood those homes. Let's pray instead of, God, they need to change, let's pray for God, show them the change. Put it within them the desire to change. Rather than saying, God, punish those that's hurting the kids, let's say, God, save the ones that's hurting the kids so that they stop. Pray for protection over these cities, over these communities. That's when the church will start to get on fire, and that's when you will see God do mighty and miraculous things. By his word, we see how much that he loves us and the mercy and the patience that he has. He's letting us have a reset. That's loving. That's kind. That's patience. That's full of mercy. He's not saying time's up. He's saying, I'm going to give you I'm going to give you a reset. How wonderful it is when somebody lets you do something over. If you've made a mistake, you'll say, can I try again? And they're like, when they say yes, you're so happy. You're like, I want, I want to do a do-over because that wasn't really what I wanted it to be. God's saying, I'm going to give you a, a reset. Not only am I going to reset things in the world, I'm going to let you have a reset. His reset through the world, though, can result in a, a shutdown, a wiping of the slate clean, a house cleansing. So I don't want you to be surprised when things start to fall apart and there's chaos and there's punishment because God's hand is in this. And sometimes a reset means tearing down what was bad to build back what is good, to reset things the way that they should be. 
What I love so much about God is he said, I don't care what you've done in the past. I don't care what you've done in the last 10 minutes if it wasn't good. I'm going to give you a reset right now. You can start over today if you want. You can come to God and you can say, I need a reset. I need a fresh start with you. I'm carrying too much baggage on my shoulders. I have too much guilt, too much shame. There's too much hidden sin in my life. You are a product of your past and your decisions, yes, but you don't have to stay that way. You can do a reset. God says, I can make all things new. There's some areas maybe that I want you to think about before closing tonight to see if you need a reset in. Maybe do you need a reset in your connection to God? You say, well, how do I know this? Ask yourself, has there ever been a time in your life that you felt closer to him than you do now? If so, the answer is yes. You need a reset. Do you need a reset in your body? Have you not been taking care of it the way that you should? Do you need a, a do-over, a start-over? See, here's what's great. If you pull God in on it, even if you've done so much damage and you ask him to help do a reset, he can repair that damage. He can make it new again. Do I need to reset my priorities? How am I spending my time? Am I spending time on things that matter to God, or is it all about me? Do I need to do a, a reset there? How about my relationships in life? Do I need to do a reset? How about my energy level? Am I trying to do too many things at once? Do I need to do a reset? And how about my thought life? How about those scary negative thoughts? Those thoughts of doom and gloom. Do I need to do a reset and ask God to restore, renew my thinking? Sam, i so thankful that we can all take advantage of this reset opportunity. And what's wonderful, this isn't just a sermon. This is a message from his word that he gave. He's all over this. So if you want to do a reset, maybe you need to do a reset of kindness or Maybe at one time you were very trusting of people, and now you trust no one. And while that can keep you safe in some areas, it can also keep you away from a lot of benefits and a lot of blessings that God wants to give you. Maybe you need to do a reset of the way that you look at life. I don't know. You walk your shoes. In your shoes, you know what you need to do a reset for. I know what I need to do a reset for in my life. And it's a beautiful opportunity. And if you do the reset with God in mind and you do a reset for his glory and a betterment of mankind, and if you want the world to be a better place, then it starts with you and me. If we want the world to change, that change starts within us. There was a wise man a long time ago, and he said, be the change that you want to see in the world so I guess if I would say anything at the close of the sermon now is I would ask you to, to rise up, to rise up and be the person that God has called you to be, to not let the enemy beat you up any longer, to look at the things in your life that need to be reset, to recharge and encourage your, your soul and your spirit, and to revive your walk with him, and then watch God's great reset begin in your life. The song that they're going to sing tonight at the end of closing is, I Speak Jesus. And in that name is everything that you could possibly ever need in your life. So if there's areas in your life that need to be reset, why don't you speak the name of Jesus over them? Say, in the name of Jesus, my mind is going to be renewed. In the name of Jesus, I'm going to have the relationship, the connection that I want with my Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus, I'm going to walk into the anointing that was meant for me. In the name of Jesus, his heart's going to be healed. God says it's a great reset. He wants you to join it on the good side of blessings. So if you would like to take, there's cards up here that have the reset on them. If you would like to take it to have a visual as a reminder, that would be great. And when church is over, if you would like to take a slip of paper 
to help show God how serious you are for taking this world back for him, that would be awesome. God bless you, my friends. You know, in the Bible, there was a gentleman that said, I've got to talk about a Savior. I've got to talk about the Lord because if I don't, it's like fire that's shut up inside my bones. Well, in the very back, there's a daily planner that I've prayed over that I would like for you to take even if you don't use it. Because on that daily planner, I have prayed for God to let his anointing fall on each and every one of you each and every day that you open up that daily planner. I've asked God to bring peace into your household through that daily planner. I want that daily planner to remind you that God is with you every single day. He hasn't left you. He hasn't forsaken you. At the end of this year, I would like for us to be able to look back and say 2023 was a year that we got down to business. Right. 2023 is where I saw the chains breaking off my family. 2023 is when I saw the world turn around and their hands lifted up praising God. 2023, I got to see things that I had only dreamed about that was prophesied a long time ago because it said that the, the latter house is going to be greater than the former house. Yeah. You were born for such a time as this. It is not a mistake that you're here in the midst of all this stuff that's going on. I want 2023 to be the year that you rekindled your love and your passion for your Heavenly Father and your Savior if it has gone cold. If it hasn't gone cold, then I want you to kindle it up again so much that the people next to you go, whoa, I don't know what's with that person, but man, every time I'm around them, I feel good, I feel excited, I feel like things are going to turn out okay, and it's just because you walked in the room. And 2023, I want you to walk in the authority that God gave you. Quit praying for God to do stuff and start declaring that he's going to do the stuff. He says, I gave you power in my name. I gave you power to cast out devils. I gave you power to trap on scorpions. I gave you power over the enemy. Because, see, most of our prayers, they should be praises. They should be praising him for what he's done. They shouldn't be whining and complaining. You should start declaring in your life what you want changed in your life through Jesus' name. And the demons have to leave. Amen. See, the devil doesn't care how much you pray and how much you whine, but he does care when you start praising. And he really is afraid when you start realizing who you are in Christ. I wanted to have 2023 be the year that we can look back and say, that was a great reset in my life. Because I was getting tired and I was getting weary and I was getting cold and I was getting cranky. But then God came and he said, it's a year for a reset. And I can look back on this year now with more energy than I had before. A better walk with Christ than I had before. Oh, I'm excited to see what 2023 is going to bring. And I'm excited to do it alongside of you wonderful people. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for taking such good care of us. I want to thank you that we're always on your mind. I want to thank you that before we were born, you had plans and you had dreams for us. And I want to thank you that you bring words to us to let us know when we're going on down another path of, hey, that's not the way that you should go. Come over to here. Spend time with me. I want to thank you that you have given us authority to trample over the demons. I want to thank you that you've given us authority to call down the angels. Yes. I want to thank you for trusting us. I want to thank you for listening to the prayers that we pray for our lost ones, knowing that you will bring them back into the sheep. Lord, if we have gone cold in certain areas in our life, if we've become distant in certain areas, if we've not made you the priority, then Lord, I thank you for this gentle reminder that it's time to reset. It's time to reset what we think is important in our life. If it doesn't revolve around you, then we need to do a reset. I want to thank you that we can do a reset of our mind and the way that we've been thinking. If it's been more negative than positive, this is a good reminder for us to reset because what we think about, we bring to pass. Because you said in your word, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Lord, we want to be strong warriors for you. We want to be leaders for you. We want to shine your light in this dark world where it needs it the most. And we want to sit back and watch your hand do mighty and wonderful miracles and say, that's the God that we serve. And I would love to introduce him to you. Bless this wonderful group of people, Lord. Anoint them from the top of their heads to the bottom of their feet. Break off the chains that the enemy tries to wrap around them. Give them favor and opportunity where they go in life. And most importantly, help us to stay humble, to realize that everything that we have, have that's good flows straight from you to us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for protecting us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.